Okay, welcome everybody. Um, I will introduce our speaker today, which is Oliver Xu. Um, Oliver is going to share his experience, um, like first uh, being a go go to work or go overseas in in exchange student, and then he graduate and join a company, and he uses experience to go actually work overseas and have a, a lot of fun experience. And actually, he's going to share with us how to find resource which is very important, especially for young students and for uh, new graduates uh, who just enter the workforce. Uh, because when, when, you, when you're young, you have um, limited resources, you may have limited money, but how can you make this happen? Today, Oliver is going to share with us how, how to use your creativity to find a lot of resources and make them work for you. So let's welcome Oliver. OK, thanks, guys. And unfortunately, today I can share with my PowerPoint slides. And OK, so currently I have a business trip to Singapore and join the companies like some testing here. I studied in the vocational high school in Taichung. Uh, and after that, I started in the National Taiwan University of Science and Technology in my, uh, that, uh, in my OK, and, and, uh, around four years. And I majored in the construction engineering and then I, uh, after graduate, I, I, I studied a master degree also in the NTUSD. Since, so at that time, I have a good opportunity to join the exchange student program in the Kuming University in Korea. Yeah. And this is also one of the advantage for me to uh, maybe have, allow me to have more chance to uh, make more friends from, oh, oh, from the rest of the world. Yeah. And then after graduate from master degree, I joined the CTCI Corporation and I work in CTCI around seven years. And this seven years, I had a uh, working experience in the three major projects in Taichung and Oman, and also the other project in, in located in Gaosh, uh, Kaohsiung. Yeah. About my position in CTCI is the project control engineer. I responsible for scheduling and also the site control engineer. Yeah. So, so site control engineer is like we responsible for the document control and payment control and also the progress control. Yeah, we normally we assist the project site manager to have some prepare some report and and then discuss with our client like how is the progress of the overall project. Yeah, to make everything like logically of the progress calculation. Yeah, and and, and that time uh, I also. When, when, when I was working in Oman, yeah, I I I mainly uh, responsible for the payment. It's like I need to calculate the monthly how much how much quantity of each different uh, disciplines. For example, the civil and pipings, yeah, and then we release the payment to our uh, subcontractors, yeah. And now currently I'm working in the technology industries in Micron. Yeah, I just joined these years. I really sense uh, I have because the previous experience, so I can find this job in micro. Yeah. And so, so the story start from uh, when when I when, when I was a student, I, I want to share is that how is the opportunity that you can uh, learn English. Like at that time, I joined a club. It's called the Association of uh, Association of International Affairs. It's called AIA. So in this. Club, you can make a lot of foreign friends from different countries. Like we are, it's like the ambassadors in the university. You pick it, pick it, pick them out in airport, and then you help them to settle down in the school, like buying the stuff, like for example the mattress and, and some of the personal stuff, and apply like the the SIM card for the telecom, something like that. And we also holding a lot of events like the welcome party. And maybe the Moon Festival barbecue, and also uh, teach them why is the Chinese New Year, and also have some events like the autumn and the spring trips, take them to a lot of beautiful places in Taiwan. So I think with that opportunity, so allow me to make a lot of new friends and uh, also uh, make my horizon uh, have more uh, deep thinking around the world. Yeah, that, that, at that time, I remember I met a lot of uh, like Indonesian friend and Singapore friend and Vietnamese friend. So after seven years, I graduated. 
I, I saw most of them have a good career in the Southeast Asia because now uh, Southeast, Southeast Asia have, have a lot of uh, job opportunities. Yeah. And so at, at that time, I also remember like, I, I, I mean, uh, if today, if, if your school have this kind of a chance, so you can make a friends and you, you can also, it's like the school create a learning environment for everyone. So I mean, like if you uh, still have the opportunity, I, I think when you as a student, it's a good opportunity for everyone to learn, have uh, learn learning English, because learn English for us is like a tool. How do you express yourself? How how do you uh, maybe share your thinking to others and have the discussion and the interaction? And also, this is very important for our like the career when you join the, the company, maybe the foreign company. It's very important for you to maybe give others your op opinions, yeah. And also, I think making the foreign friends can allow you have a different thinking. It's not like oh, you're always thinking like a Taiwanese point of view. Sometimes you can change your mind. Oh, maybe compare the housing price of Taiwan, also the, maybe the salary of the Taiwan, maybe which one is better for us to choose to have the, to, to design our career path. So, so at that time, I think uh, with this opportunity, I, I know a lot of the different opportunities from the, from the world. So that's the reason why I choose to work in CTCI after I graduate from master degree. Yeah, and uh, I still remember that uh, when I when I joined the exchange student program in Korea, I I, I joined the uh, it's a one class called the Capstone Engineering Design, and this class is like you're going to have a weekly meeting with the Korean and also like foreigners. For example, you are design a bridge or design a foundation for the house. So you, you just get uh, some of the okay the design information from the professor. So you are going to choose what kind of the methodology you're going to use. So this kind of opportunity allow you to uh, have a lot of a discussion with other countries, people. Yeah. So I think the during that class, most important is like the process, like how, how do you work with others, with different cultures, people. Yeah. You, you you can have you can share like the design experience in Taiwan. Like we have a typhoon, we have earthquake. So we don't we need to consider what kind of specification. But maybe in Korea or in other country, because every country the design specification may have some difference. Depends on which this country's the specs from USA or from Japan. Yeah, or from UK, so so it's a good chance for me to know how to cooperate with other different cultures, uh, people. Yeah, and also uh, at that time, once of one of my professor encouraged me, like he, he think I have a potential, maybe can work in uh, other countries, something like that. So that inspired me. Maybe after graduate, choose a company, have a chance, maybe work worked in other countries. I think uh, so. I want to uh, recommend if you are still a student, you you can have a chance to maybe join the exchange student program because now the COVID is go uh, is now quite serious now. So maybe you can uh, apply the exchange student from your school because this is you don't need to pay the academy fee to school. You just you just uh, join the program. Maybe uh, spend some of the life wares. To school and you can enjoy like uh, study abroad yeah and call maybe have a uh, like like if, if you stay abroad maybe you have more chance to see the world how, how does the work work yeah not not like just uh, in school like you follow every textbooks because a lot of things in the world that like the textbook cannot tell you everything so, so I highly recommend you to join the Change Student Program because this is not like you study abroad need to spend a lot of money. Yeah. Okay. And uh, so this is why I want to share these two opportunities. Like if you are still a student, you can join some club and can make your international friends from different countries. And second, like, like you can join the Change Student Program. So also, I, I think if today you join the interview, uh, the interview interviewer want to compare okay this attendee and the other attendee which one is better if, if you can create a different uh, experience 
So uh, maybe this can allow you to work, to find a better job in the future. Yeah. Okay. And then uh, I want I'm going to share the working life in Oman. Yeah. So so I work around three years in Oman. In in cities yeah, that you if you join cities yeah, you have a lot of chance to work abroad, like the Middle East and also Southeast Asia. And now they also have the construction project in the United States. So I think uh, if you just graduate, this is a good chance for you to uh, just find a different career path. Like some, because most of uh, maybe Taiwanese students when they graduate, they, they want to maybe join the official servant test. Maybe uh, this allow you to have the other choice. Yeah, don't um, don't too abstract in your life. Like that, you must do something at this role. Sometimes sometimes you have different paths can choose in your life. Yeah. So and then I join uh, okay work in Oman. I think uh, in the first month I didn't get used to that because every day is like a typical life. You you work around the six, six o'clock and then go to the site. The the company will have the van deliver you to a construction site, and then uh, you have a, we we have a weekly meeting. I need to prepare the weekly report to to the client, and sometimes and every month the busy time is like almost the end of the month because every subcontractor they are going to prepare like the work version to apply the how much comp quantity they complete that month. So at that time I, I was very busy to check the completion quantities. Yeah. But, but my meaning is like uh, this kind of opportunity uh, allow you like you know uh, because normally in Taiwan the completion percentage of the project is provided by, sub by subcontractor, but maybe different company have a different process. So so this process maybe uh, allow us to control, like, why uh, because our supervisors can check the quantity of the percentage. So we can control the cash flow, yeah, to the finance team, something like that, yeah. So almost the three years I uh, do, do a similar job, yeah, but, but Follow the construction progress. Maybe the first thing is the piling, and then it's the foundation, and after that is the installation of the equipment, and also the piping, prefabrication, and installation. So, uh, if you stay in, I, I highly recommend uh, the freshman. You could, when you just graduate, you can choose uh, work in the construction site because you can see from a uh, maybe the green field, the land. And, and then become the construction, everything grew out like a house. Yeah. And so during this uh, opportunity, you can learn a lot from the different, very professional technique. For, for example, like the piping, welding. Yeah. Like, it, how, how do we maybe increase the progress of that? Yeah. yeah. But the, normally in the construction site, it's like we, we review the progress. We help our subcontractor can have more manpower to let us not delay the project. Yeah, I think different kind of the construction object have a different methods, yeah. And in, when I was working on Oman, almost I need to work six days a week. Yeah, so so it's a good chance for you if you want to save the money, you, you can uh, choose maybe work abroad and, and and you can this can allow you to increase the working experience yeah because company will arrange like the accommodation and also the meals and also the visas yeah i, I think the most important things for us like uh, work abroad is visa because uh, uh normally normally you know the if you want to work abroad visa is not easy to get yeah because maybe some people will think oh maybe taiwan it's a little similar to China, but actually we are not. So, but, but if you have a chance to join a Taiwanese company, have the aspect projects, so company will solve all of these problems for you. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So, and I, I can share like, if you have a chance to work in the Middle East, you can see a lot of different countries people work together, like from the India, from the Philippines. The majority of them are Philippines. Philippines and Indians. And also we have the subcontractor from China. Because maybe they're uh, the, the man the man the budget of the manpower maybe will is compared with other countries, 
it's not it's very com uh, it's very competitive yeah that, that if you want to hire the same person in Middle East maybe you can find the same uh, ability yeah but so so if you visit the Middle East you can see the construction site the engineer the major engineer are from the South Asia or the Southeast Asia yeah yeah, I think still have the chance for Taiwanese engineer to work there. Yeah. Okay. So so this is a working lab in Oman. Maybe later, if you have any question, you can uh, ask me or discuss with me. Yeah. And then uh, this year, I joined Micron, and it's a different industry. But but I still responsible for the construction projects. Yeah. Like we have the expansion projects. So I also help company to arrange the schedule with our contractors yeah I think I think uh, I want to share is like if you have this opportunity to work in the foreign company it's very important like you need to show you need to show what's your ability to them yeah because, because uh, most of foreign company they hire them someone they don't want like the people like a white paper with maybe have no experience they want someone maybe already have maybe few experience so you can share your uh, maybe experience to the project. Yeah, this is quite important. And like like my team currently, we have uh, Singaporean, Malaysian, Philippine, and also Canadian. Yeah, Americans work together as a team. So it's very uh, it's very interesting. Like you work with different cultures, person. Yeah, it's not like like previously I work with Taiwanese, and now you have more. You, you, it's like an international team, so you need to cooperate with others. Yeah. And and also for us, I think it, because Taiwan, we know the uh, Chinese, so it's very good for us. Like, it, because the market is still a lot, it's still very big, like, like the China and Taiwan and also Southeast Asia countries, we can speak Chinese. So you, you can still have the chance uh, to find a better job compared with someone maybe they don't know Chinese yeah okay. so I think uh, the remaining time you can provide your question to me yeah I think there are many ways to uh, study to to work abroad and I want to share it's like because I joined OTE around one years so I I got a lot of information like how can how can the Taiwanese people work abroad? abroad or find a chance uh, find, a, find a good chance maybe stay abroad I think I also think the study is a good way because some of my uh, our uh, our team members uh, is, uh, most of them currently work abroad because they are studying there so after graduate the local marketing local market require the manpower so they have a better chance like compare someone if you just graduate from Taiwan and you want to directly find a foreign job I think I think directly graduate from Taiwan find a foreign job maybe more challenge. Yeah. So so if you have the maybe have a dream to work in USA or in Australia or Singapore, yeah, I think I highly recommend maybe study the master degree or or the further studying there, and then after you get there, you have a lot of chance to find a local job. Yeah. Okay, so. So sorry about that. I cannot share my slides. So I think uh, next session, like we can, most of you can ask the question and we can discuss. Okay. Okay. So Oliver, you uh, you you just uh finish your uh, presentation. Like you you finished. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no problem. I just realized uh today we just gonna turn this presentation into a podcast, which is very popular right now because hey. The, our audience can only hear you, but not seeing any slide. But that's fine. We can, um, like Bing just said, we can maybe do some magic, like after afterwards, and uh, put the put the slide in. Um, so while our audience is uh, generating their questions, I do have some questions for you because um, I spoke with you before you before your presentation, and uh, yeah, I I'm very interested in your uh, like overall experience. And the most importantly, we have the same mentor, which is Edward. I know um, you benefit from him a lot while you're in school. Is, is he the one who encourages you to 
take more yeah, step, yeah, like, yeah. Step, like go out of your comfort zone. <laughs> yeah, correct, correct. I forgot to mention that. Does, does ever join the... Of course he's here. Oh, okay. Of course okay. he's here. I, I can hear a lot of stories. Uh, I get a support from Edward. Like, I, I forgot to mention that like, when, when I joined the CTC, I, at, at that time, I don't have any networking with CTC. I, so I discussed with Edward. So and Edward really gave me a lot of support. Like He, he shared with me that CTC, I sometimes held a webinar or some workshop. So I, I saw one workshop in my department, so I registered them. And, be, and because of the workshop, I need to pay the money. At that time, I don't have money. So I tell them maybe I can be volunteer to join the workshop and help anything for the CTCI. Yeah. So so at that time I luckily I joined one of the projects like the workshop. They CTCI share the projects uh, like the like the drawback and the the dis like the disadvantage advantage for CTCI maybe join this project. So at that time with this chance. I when, when I interview CTC, I, I tell the interviewer about this. So this allow me maybe have more opportunity to get hired in CTC. Yeah, this is how I get from the Edwards ideas. Yeah, and also the second, I think, uh, I think in the 2017, uh, I, I joined the CICHE, one of the inter uh, SEC as international like the future leader forum, and in this forum, a lot every the C SCCES, every country will let it one uh, young teenager join that event in Nepal. So, so in that time, I attend, I represent Taiwan to join that event and sharing my working experience. And I think that that uh, forum is quite nice because you can make a lot of different countries excellent, outstanding young engineer. Yeah, you can see what's the difference of different country young engineer. Yeah. So, so, and this is also increased my, uh, like my CV when I joined the interview. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you, Oliver. And also, I want to mention Oliver did mention a very important trick is uh, this is coming from Edward is when you want to go to an event and it requires that you pay an entry fee and you don't have the money, what do you do? You go register as a volunteer, and then you have a chance to go and you have a chance to join the event, right, Oliver? Yeah, 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 correct, correct. Be because you are a student, so yes. I think most of the, then they are happy to have the free volunteer. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I encourage uh, all of you, uh, keep this in mind. This is very helpful. And it's add to your, like, like Oliver said, add to your CV, show your future employer, you take initiative, you are, uh, yeah, you are taking initiative. So that's a, that, that, that's a very good way to uh, maybe expand your network and learn more things. and. Yeah, meet new people. Okay, so we do have some questions here listed. The, fr the first one is from Vincent. He said, thanks for the presentation, Oliver. What is your current role in Micron Tech? Okay, currently I'm working as a project control engineer. It's like a planner and scheduler. Yeah. Like, like as I mentioned, we have a lot of expansion project in many countries. So I'm responsible for monitoring the schedule. Like if you study the construction management, you will know like the cost control and schedule control is quite important, right? So so uh, I'm responsible for monitor some of the major project here. Yeah, I join like join the weekly meeting and find out the questions of the delay and report to our management. Yeah. So this is what I do here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, thank you, Oliver. The next question is from Chen Wei. His question is, you mentioned you were doing the payment to the subcontractors. Mm -hmm. I wonder, have you faced a problem that overseas firm or the local government did not complete the final payment to your firm? And how do you deal with it? Uh, he asked, because, because I heard it's quite common in the contractor did not receive the last payment. Did this happen to you? Uh, if this happened, how do you deal with it? Yeah, I think I think the last payment is very uh, important because previously my role is like the contractor. We have a subcontractor, and now I am the client. I have the contractors, so the role changed. So my my thinking also <laughs> changed. Yeah, so so at that time I can share like our subcontractor actually is very hard to get a final payment. But, but I think compared with Taiwan market and the foreign market. 
Kevin Markey is very hard to get a final quantity of the work because I, I feel like the Taiwanese we play the game, like the Taiwanese game, but in the international market, like if this maybe like because Oman is a country colonized by UK, so everything every the, the law follow the UK, so so when when they have these questions, uh, they they need to pay. Like, like the every companies from sub country, too, they have the quantity surveyor. So quantity surveyor, they will check how much of the, the overall completion quantity of each uh, activity in your work variation. Yeah, if if they find something loss from the client, so they will plan and they will provide the calculation sheet. Yeah, if, if today your role is the sub country, so that is very important for your company Be because you collect this data uh, from the beginning to the end of the project. So, so you have the evidence to the the, the, the owners, yeah. If you are a company, you, you you cannot just say, oh, the final panel have the issue, but the progress, the process is more important from the beginning to the end. You need to clear this, like you need to know the story and clear the evidence from the beginning to the end and then claim with the owner, yeah. And in the end, I, I, I think procurement team and your com the client procurement team and your company procurement team, they will have a negotiation. How is the final, yeah, final, uh, final country amount? Because sometimes your company also has a problem, like the delay, or you, you, you always have the construction always have the problem of the delay, or you have to destroy something, like for example, some material, some warehouse, a lot of issues like that. So need to bargain with the, each other. Yeah, but I, I highly recommend, like if today you are sub country, you need to you need to have someone to. Prepare all of the document, calculate the quantity to, to know what is the real estimating amount of the project in, in before the end. Yeah. 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 So but, but I know in Taiwan the some of some some country today, they just want the money. They don't want to provide how much quantity. They just tell us, oh, I I I, I lost around the maybe what 10 million, something like that. But we tell them, why did you lose? What, what did you lose about this 10 million? They cannot propose anything. So how can we pay you the money? Yeah, if you want the money, you can just say how much the money you lose. You need to provide the evidence. Yeah, if if, if you if your evidence is yeah is the logical, I think we we can review that. Yeah, it's it's a normal sense in the construction industry. And also, I can share when I joined the opportunity work, work, working opportunity in Oman and Micro, Be, because in Taiwan we don't have the quantity surveyor. Actually, quantity survey is quite important for the company. When you plan a monthly payment to your client or your subcontractor plan the money to you, this, this role is very important to verify the quantity of your project. Yeah. But in Taiwan, normally we don't have this role. We, we just ask uh, maybe a normal engineer to do this role, but actually he may be not familiar with the detail. Yeah. So, so I hope maybe what Taiwan one day can get better about that. Okay, how how I re reply your question? Okay, um, let's move on to okay. Chen Wei says yes, and thank you. Let's move on to the next question. The uh, next question is from Si Boyuan. He said he asked, "Will it be difficult to manage foreign subcontractors due to different background or concept?" And by the way, what's the most challenging to live in the Middle East? I think you're a perfect one to answer this question. Oh, okay, okay. This first question is difficult to manage foreign subcontractor due to different program. Yeah, and, and that time I have the contractor from the program back, background is like from India. So actually in India, they this kind of company they will hire the England one director. So England director will tell teach them how to plan to the contractor. Yeah, how, how the subcontractor they will hire someone who have more experience like. What kind of things need to prepare to us? Like, like they, they play the international game. Yeah. But, but it's very important for us to know in the country, like the, uh, we need to know how, how to calculate the quantity of each uh, discipline for, for us. Yeah. But, but we have another contractor from China. So, so China is a little similar like Taiwan. They just claim how much money they want, but they, don't, they cannot propose the, the finished quantity of the work well. Yeah, so so that's the this the advantage of that. Yeah, I I mean this is about the payment uh, control. 
the, the concept. But for the construction work, I think I, I do believe that two of them, uh, they, they are really have a lot of hard, hard working workers. Yeah. <coughs> Compared with Taiwan, I want to share it's like Middle East because the weather is always nice. Like they only have seven days raining days per year. So every day they have enough manpower and good weather to work. Yeah, so so normally if you have the sufficient man, manpower, you can complete, complete, complete this work on time. Yeah, it's quite of a, because in Taiwan, the weather is a risk for every construction project, right? Yeah, but, but compared with different country, like in the Middle East, it's a good place that you, if you have the outdoors, this kind of the construction, the, the weather maybe is not a risk. And the second question is the most challenge to live in Middle East. I think uh, I, I want to share. I think it's I think it's the I think the majority of the job is not a problem. Yeah, because the company send you to there, you just complete the work. Yeah, some some of my teammates share like they prefer to work abroad because in Taiwan you have a lot of the issue like the political political issue need to solve or the client maybe want to have like social event with you but in middle east you don't need to care you don't need to uh, worry about that because uh, so, sometimes the work and life balance is better than taiwan yeah and i think the main the major challenge for you is that maybe sometimes you miss your family because of the construction progress maybe you cannot go get that to taiwan frequently yeah and i remember in the end of the project because of covid uh, most of us are stuck in Oman, maybe around more than seven months. We cannot get back. Yeah, Atlanta is quite a struggle because you, you, when we walk in, we have the risk about the COVID and the local people, maybe they are not like the Taiwanese worry about that. They, they don't want to wear the mask. So, it, but you need, you still need to work in the same environment this then. So for us, we have a high risk. Yeah, I think okay. that's amazing. Very struggle. I was working. Okay. Well, uh, Oliver, here I do want to add uh, like an add-on question because you mentioned uh, when you at uh, when SDCCI sent you to Middle East, they provide you working visa. And would you share more about what others do the company provide, like uh, like holidays and maybe a trip, airplane ticket back to Taiwan, and and the benefits? What do you get? Like the package? I think many people, our audience, would very interested to know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I think currently cities have changed the package now, and I don't I didn't know how is the new policy. But previously, the company will provide the air airline tickets. Like the every three months, you can get back from a foreign country to Taiwan, and you can take a rest maybe from six working days to ten working days. Like if you work farther, you you work maybe in the Middle East, you can take day ten day leave. Pay, pay, pay leave. So you, you can have a two weeks vacation in Taiwan and can and come back to Oman. Yeah. And also the benefits like when you transfer the airline, you you maybe you have a chance to have some traveling in Dubai because Dubai is a country next to Oman. You only take around two hours of by car. Yeah. And and time I remember every time when I have a vacation, maybe I will stay half day in Dubai, maybe go shopping. Yeah. Seeing, seeing, uh, visit the Dubai Mall, you can see a lot of international company. Yeah, it's it's a good opportunity because we sell that we if you spend the money to Dubai, maybe will cost around thirty thousand. But but if you working there, you know, this is pay the company. You you just spend them. You just need to uh, schedule what kind of activity you want to do there. Yeah, and also if you have a chance working in Middle East, you you can visit a lot a lot of Middle East country like Egypt. Qatar and Turkey's, yeah, and Dubai, yeah, quite a lot of the chance and perks for you, yeah. And normally, company uh, provide uh, the house that everyone have the single uh, studio. The studio have the bed and the bathroom, yeah, separate bathroom, yeah. And also, you have the kitchen, so you can cool uh, with your, uh, yeah, with your colleagues. Yeah, I, I remember at that time I had a good relationship with colleagues because we live together and we work together. Yeah, now like they become the family of you. <laughs> yeah, but, but I want to share maybe different countries have a different uh, policies. Yeah, 
maybe like uh, you have a chance in Singapore, maybe company will change the policy. Yeah. Like, like work in Oman because transportation is a problem. So company will have a small bus, maybe deliver you to the construction site. And they have the twice twice a week can send you to the local market, like the careful or the city center, so you can buy anything you want there. Yeah. Thank you, Oliver. Um, we have next question. Uh, he said, great, great presentation, Oliver. Thanks for your time. Is there a chance to add you on, on LinkedIn? Do you have a LinkedIn profile, Oliver? LinkedIn profile. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. Yeah, okay. Uh, would you mind share with us in the chat box and we can go find you? Uh, okay, my LinkedIn profile is Zhilongxi. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, link, yeah link, link, LinkedIn is a, is a must-have tool. If you want to work overseas and you don't have a LinkedIn profile, I suggest you to go get one or build one and add all of OTEA's members as your connection. Yeah, correct, correct. Oh, I want to share like the current job I find is, is I, I find a job in LinkedIn. Yeah, because some, sometimes the global job you, you can find in the 103. Yeah, we call it links. But, but yeah. because of foreign company, the HR plan, maybe it's also they want to find some people qualified the international market. So so you could you also the international HR, maybe some like the jump job hunter, they are from Hong Kong or Singapore. So they are looking for the yeah, the uh, potential potential uh, yeah, potential person maybe through the linking. So so it's great for you, maybe you update your CV there. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Oliver. Uh, the next question is from me. So I want to ask, what is quality survey? Can you elaborate a little bit more? Because this is a kind of a new idea. Yeah. Okay. So I, I can share I can share the what quantity surveyor can do for the construction project. Uh, like in currently my colleagues also quantity surveyor. And uh, it's like you, you can work as an estimator when, when the company is going to have the investment chance, maybe in other countries. So you, 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 you can calculate how much of the, each construction, like the civil and the structure, also architecture, how many quantities, so you can get overall quantity. And this quantity ties to the unit rate of the local area. So you can get the project, you can get how much of the project's budget of that. Yeah. And I think this is for the estimate. And also the when the bidders, when the bidder they provide the tendering document of the BOQ, the estimate, they, they will also review the quantity and the unit rate provided from them. Yeah. So so quantity survey is a rule like during the tendering procurement stage is very important. Yeah. And also after awarding of the project from the contractor, uh, Q, uh Normally, we call the quantity survey the QS engineer. So QS engineer can help them to uh, check the maybe the monthly quantity quantity. Yeah, yeah. If you are a client, but if you are the contractor from the project, you you can calculate uh, each area, each building, each floor quantity quantity and provide to the client and apply the monthly payments. Yeah. So so for different role of the construction project. Uh, the the, the uh, QS engineer have a different roles. Yeah, it depends depends on yeah which roles you belong. Yeah, because the QS they I, I think in the this QS the words from the England. Yeah, so so some so most of the country apply the QS like they was colonized by UK before like Australia, Malaysia, and Singapore. Yeah, so so normal construction project they when when they make sure mm -hmm. the final uh, project have no amount of the complete of the final project. They will use the QS role for apply to the project. Yeah. Okay. But, but I, I'm still uh, learning about that because I just know QS role <laughs> this year. Yeah. OK. Well, it well, seems, seems to me, uh, because I, I talked to you and Bing and other, uh, other people in my company, seems like the quality surveying role is a if there is a rising need there. Is is it because um it's all tied to money because it it ties mm -hmm. to like how much how much work you're doing like the unit rate is very important you just mentioned mm -hmm. yeah okay thank you yeah um 
that's uh, provide us some some insight if you want to uh, explore the quality serving role that uh, there's a there's a need out there like in the construction and engineering industry uh, am i right yeah, i think vincent vincent replied uh, quantity surveying is in my experience uh, often a popular international student degree they has a better chance change to eventually lead to permanent residency yeah but they are open now considers an engineer here okay it's a yeah. Similar oh yeah that's a uh, vincent's comment yeah it could be considered as an estimator instead okay that makes sense thank you vincent um and okay next question we we have like eight minutes left let's go uh next question is a very good one from roger he said a uh, great achievement you made so far big congratulations and he wants to ask for the career development we understand the most difficulties are to thinking out of the box and step mm -hmm. out of your comfort zone any suggestion and sharing to the people uh, who want to step out to take the ones to take the first step to step step out the first step. Yes, um, I think he, uh, I think he wants to ask. Do you yeah. have any suggestions to those who, um, just going to take the first step? So what what would you suggest them to do? I think it's a very huge topic. <laughs> 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 I well, don't interact with more experience. I'll share you. What what did you do? Okay. Like. In, in this journey, what did you do? Maybe you can give them some idea. Mm, yeah, I, I think if you have idea to change your job, find a better career, first thing is like you need to do research of the market. And mm -hmm. also like the occurrence of Taiwan, like currently the renewable industry in Taiwan is quite famous, quite popular. A lot of foreign company, they uh, have a like the offshore wind, yeah, wind plant in Taiwan. Yeah, so so I think it's very important. Like, if you want to change your job, you you need you you should maybe do the research of the market. This is the first step, and you you need to check yourself if you qualify for this market or not. If sometimes you still get the same job, but this job maybe have no future opportunity, maybe you can start to thinking to find a better chance. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, great, great suggestion. Thank you. Do you have anything else you want to add? um yeah. yeah well but what i get from from your answer is that the first step is it's very important is do your own research because only you know mm -hmm. where you want to go where what you want to be so do your research of the market you want to jump in and the second is examine yourself to see if you're qualified what what kind of tool do you need to add to your belt to be become a candidate or become a yeah become a candidate in this industry yeah that that's what that's my take from Oliver's answer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. <laughs> Great. <laughs> but but okay. when I do when I do this business training in Singapore, I think Singapore has a lot of chance. <laughs> right, right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe saw... that can be a next topic. Next <laughs> <laughs> <Okay. laughs> next topic, maybe. Okay. Um here we have another question from also from Roger. He says, please share the cultural difference in local and international company. Uh, in terms of team working, communications, and even office politics, what's the most challenge you encounter in my micro? And how mm -hmm. did you deal with it? Oh, that's a big one. Okay, first, he wants to ask the cultural difference okay. in Middle East. Oh, Middle or, East. Or the cultural shock you have, let's ask. <laughs> 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 what the yeah. Uh, okay. I don't know. Uh, they, in in Middle East, like you know, the most of them are Muslim, right? So I think Oman is a good country because they allow uh, the female to work in office. So it's it's very nice that the uh, office sometimes have a female engineer. You can work together. Yes, not quite different from Taiwan. Yeah, but some, sometimes the culture shock is like uh, maybe. But during the work, maybe some of the colleague in office they, they like the fragrance of the incense, so they will fire the incense in the office. <laughs> oh yeah, so so you need to stay in the open space and smell the incense maybe all day. Some some people like they they are they don't like that. Yeah, so they complain about that to the maybe the administrator here. But but also the local staff they complain maybe the food you eat in in because some people don't like to cook their lunch. So they bring to office. 
but the local people also complain oh, your food smell is not good. So, mm -hmm. so it's very funny to think that yeah, the local people they don't like maybe sometimes some behavior of us too. Yeah. But I think the one of the main cultures stuck here. Um, I think it's the people's thinking is very different from Taiwanese. Yeah. In what way? I think it's religion because as far as I say, uh, the everything that uh, every day in life they need to pray maybe five times per day. Mm -hmm. so they wake up very early, like uh, five o'clock, and they join the praying. Also during the work, sometimes they join the praying. Yeah, and also office have a praying room for them. Yeah, it's very interesting. Yeah, and also uh, they Muslim they have a Ramadan. Ramadan is like uh, one month. They cannot eat anything in the morning. It's like the fasting, yeah. So at that time, you can see some of the state, they cannot eat anything. And, and the company suggests us not drink or eat the food before that. Yeah, Be because they will make them maybe feel sad, like they cannot eat what we eat something. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think that's a man, culture shock, working in Middle East. But I think if you want to work there, uh, it will be better you know this. You, you need to know how, what is the role of the Muslim. And no poke before them. Don't start any poke before them because poke mm -hmm. is uh, they think poke is disgusting and something like that. Yeah. Yeah. And no well, alcohol. Uh, mm -hmm. No alcohol. Also. No alcohol. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You cannot go to a bar after work. Can you? Can you drink in a bar after work? Yeah, but by an interesting part is that uh, most of the Middle East country, some of the hotel they have uh, maybe the soccer bar. So um, maybe every Friday night we can see a lot of colleagues from our company. They join there, have the beer. Yeah, if you need to, you need to want to have the beer there. The the bar need to have a license of the. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I see. Yeah, well, what you said reminds me of uh, when I when I was still at school because my supervisor is Muslim. Yeah, there there once it, it happens is we are discussing uh, during our discussion. He look at his watch and pull out a blanket from his drawer and i that time i know he he needs to pray and i should leave him alone and come back after maybe whenever he calls me and i remember there's a i i do have a classmate from uae um riyadh or judah from sao saudi yeah and there there's a time is uh, is in there they're fasting during the day and i and i have my lunch bus walking to the classroom and say elizabeth don't eat in front of us or we otherwise we'll hate you i know i know they're joking but they do do follow their religious very um very strictly yeah so i think that's uh that's definitely uh, the cultural difference i see and i think what you experience is very valuable because you don't get to see it often especially in taiwan right mm, yeah yeah okay okay oh, okay now we don't have any questions in our chat box. If you have more, you're welcome to stay to our to our Chinese session. And lastly, let me do a little bit of advertisement. So next month in is in September. September we are inviting Danny. Danny Xie. I'm I'm not sure if he if he's on. So Danny is gonna share his experience from working from working holiday to study overseas. So that's very interesting. I'm already looking forward to it. So this is a little advertisement to next month um, session. So thank you everyone for joining us. You're here to make this presentation great. Okay, um, Ming, the microphone is for you and we can resume to a Chinese session. Thank you, Oliver, then. Yeah, yeah sorry, I cannot <laughs> provide my slides, yeah. Actually, oh, actually, I'm quite struggling this week, you know. It? I have a, I joined the meeting with my boss and we have a some social event to 10 o'clock. Every day maybe I have less sleep. Maybe only four hours to six hours per day. Oh my god, you're working too hard. Okay, let's uh finish the session and begin our Chinese session. <laughs>